I wolf baited myself into buying a comic. Shh, 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 shh. It's okay, little buddy. We'll figure it out. I am entropy. <laughs> My name's Audrey Horn. Wendy. Darling, light of my life. So Joe Hill's Wolverton Station was released last week. It's a creep show comic. Now this will be a spoiler review, so if you're wanting to click away, as always, spoilers abound. Okay, so I bought the digital version. Here's my proof. So if I review something, whether it's a comic, book, movie, I won't go off a pirate site and review it. I'll try to offer some type of proof that I actually purchased it. Comics especially because they're so easy to pirate. Okay, so how did I wolf bait myself into buying this comic? So last month I did a book and comic adaptation video. New releases coming up in 2024. And I saw Wolverton Station. So if there's something new in the comic, book, movie realm involving werewolves and zombies, I'm probably going to check it out. So what I usually do when there's a new release, mainly with movies, is I'll watch the trailer and then I won't dig into anything else about it. If it's a comic or a book, I'll just read the synopsis and I won't dig deep into it. I want to go in knowing as little as possible. If the trailer or just a brief intro can get my attention, then that's good enough. So when I read the synopsis for the comic, I think it was actually for the book. Let's take a look. Saunders made his fortune as a hatchet man for hire and it's come to England to do what he does best. Chop down the little guys to clear the way for a global firm. But his train, North, just made an unexpected stop to let on some passengers straight out of the worst kind of fairy tale. Now he's up to his ankles in blood and finding out just what it really means to live in a dog-eat-dog -dog world. I'm probably going to buy it. Alright, so in my head, reading this a month ago, I have Hatchet Man... He's chopping down people. I wasn't even in the ballpark of what this comic's actually about. Okay, so for whatever reason, in my head, I had it that there's this businessman and he's on a train. There's wolves on it. Hatchet. He's chopping through them. It's action-packed. I should have known if it's a creep show comic, it's not going to be about action, chopping heads off, fighting wolves. There's going to be some twist in it. So with all media going forward, I imply the bookjack method. Another booktuber who said skip all prologues, forwards, anything that's at the beginning of the book because it'll probably spoil it for you. This week I learned apparently there are people who skip prologues in books. What? And I found out earlier in January that this also applies for comics. I was reading Marvel 1602 reading the stuff before the comic gets started and it had major plot spoilers that's on me i should have known better so i'm trying to apply this with just all media i consume and i actually went on goodreads and i can't find it but there was some other guy who did a review too and he just read the synopsis for the short story and the word hatchet was in his mind too and he thought it was going to be something completely else it's funny how we fool ourselves okay so let's get into the comic this is my first creep show comic Big fan of the movies in the 80s. And I think the movie is just kind of a underrated gem, the first Creep show. Screen record activated. Okay, so we have The Creep. They did a bunch of covers, which looked really good. I'll put some of them up here. With the digital purpose, you didn't get a choice of covers. This cover looks really good, though. I like The Wolf, The Full Moon. This really gets my attention. Okay, so this is from Image Comics. Strange, eerie, terrifying. All right, so here we have the creep introducing us to our main character, Saunders, who collects classic horror memorabilia. So in his hand, I believe this is the pendant that Dracula actually wore in the movie. So off screen, somebody says, is that really the most you can pay? So it looks like we have a single mom. She's trying to sell this item, hoping to buy a car with it. He's a businessman. He's trying to get the best price. He's not running a charity. It's kind of funny. Ever consider a bike with a baby seat on the back? Better than walking. So they're trying to set him up right from the beginning as a real ruthless bad guy. Then he goes on and he gets another great deal on some mummy memorabilia. It's been a real pleasure doing business with ya. So we go through his museum with him and you can see he's got a lot of good memorabilia here. So he's on his headset and he's talking with a potential customer. I've come into possession of a certain silver wolf-headed cane from a certain classic werewolf movie. 
Tell me you haven't wanted it since forever. So I think it's the silver cane from the 1940s, the Wolfman. So that sends him on a trip to England to purchase it. And he's at this train station that's on strike. So we got the creep. He just says, I'm just here to creep. Saunders isn't into public transportation and he wants a private car. He's SOL. Is this Joe Hill down here? Okay, so right from the beginning we have anthropomorphic wolves walking around. And he's being a jerk to this huge werewolf. So I don't know if it's normal in this world to have werewolves walking around. Or if there's something wrong with him to where he's just looking at people like this. Alright, he's trying to get a ride, but this guy doesn't have any drivers. So now he's on the train riding with the peasants. And we see three wolves that appear to be harassing this young lady. So maybe wolves are a thing, I don't know. So something's going on in the back, we don't know what. And he's looking kind of worried at this point. So he has this short conversation with this werewolf, all seems perfectly normal, until he has to go potty. The bathroom's a mess, he freaks out. Okay, so at this point, I don't know what's going on. These wolves are just killing everybody in peasant class. Always go first class. So then we have this guy. Oi, first class tickets only beyond this point. So these wolves are wanting dessert. They're going to catch up with them in a few stops. All right, so he's back in his seat, and he's not getting any sympathy from this other passenger. He's already had some fish and chips, so he's not going to eat them. So he's getting ready to get off the train, and he's got to get in one last parting shot. You remember earlier when you said all Americans smell like cheeseburgers? Remember that? We smell like wieners. Oh. So we've established that this guy is a real jerk. And when faced with werewolves, he's still acting like an a-hole. Needs to take it down a notch. So he gets off the train, and the werewolf Utes are still after him. Uh, uh, to what did you say Utes? Excuse me. Utes. And at this point, I thought it'd be, oh man, he's not going hatchet crazy on these people. It's totally not what I was expecting. I thought it'd be really fun if he had to fight his way off the train. There was a movie like that not too long ago. I'll play a clip here. And here he is. He still can't help but being a jerk. Oh, and he left his phone on the train. I think at this point, he's not the type of guy who would forget his phone. But we got to move the plot forward. So here he is being the world's biggest jerk and the richest man to ever sit in this cab. He wants to get to a payphone. Well, here you are, sir. Payphone right outside the door. So right here he says, can't you see them? The driver turns around. Of course, he's a wolf. And he gets what's coming to him. It's not the size of the dog and the fright. It's the size of the fright and the dog. <laughs> and there's the cane he was going to buy. Okay, so here's my problem with the page count. It said 33 pages. Now, typically, a comic will be anywhere between 21, 22 pages. So I thought 33 pages, that's going to be a lot of content. But here we are in page 24, and we have not one, not two, but three letters to the editor. Typically, a comic book will have, like, one section dedicated to letters, sometimes two, but three is a bit much, and they left all this blank space here, too. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six pages of advertisements for future comics. Not happy with the page count. Rated M for mature. Put hair on your chest. Okay, so my thoughts on getting wolf baited. Wolf baiting myself. I'm going to read the fine print from now on. Okay, so let's just rate the comic. On a scale of 0 to 100, this would be about a 65. I enjoyed the werewolf action, the way they're walking around, talking, not just feral beasts. They've done stuff like that before in The Howling. It can add an extra element of horror if done right. Now, our bad guy Saunders in this, just kind of a classical jerk. It is a short comic, so we're not going to get a lot of exposition. I guess there were some actual changes between the Joe Hill short story and the adaptation for the comic. I think making him a horror collector in the comic was more appropriate. 
you know, it's really light on plot. We're kind of rooting for this guy just to get maimed at the end, mauled to death. We don't have a lot of sympathy for him. The art was pretty good, but the colors are just terrible. For some reason, modern comics in the past, I don't know, like five or six years have gone to this purplish, pinkish color and tone that really washes out all the other colors. Nothing really pops out or stands out. It's become a real trend and I hope it stops. Annie from Obscure Book Adventures just did a comic review of Creepshow. And her just flipping open the book and showing the colors and art really shows the dramatic difference between the two comics. If I can put them side by side here, I'll do that. Take a look at this and which one would you rather look at visually? This new Creepshow comic from 2024 or the 80s version? If they had put a little more effort into coloring, I probably would have ranked this a bit higher. I'm just so jaded by the lazy coloring I've seen in comics lately. So just put a little more effort into the coloring. And don't advertise a comic book as 33 pages when 10 pages of it is just fluff and filler material that has nothing to do with the actual comic. That's clickbait. I'm going to shop around and see if I can get a good price on the original Creepshow comic or a reprint. Big fan of the movie and I want to check out the comic. <sighs> so I'll have to check and see what other Creepshow comics they got coming down the pipe. Seems a lot of people enjoy it. Comic and horror, that's right in my wheelhouse. So what'd you think, Reggie? I love anything wolf related. You would, you filthy animal. All right, so that was Joe Hill's Wolverton Station creep show comic. It was worth $4.50. Thanks for watching. If you found this informative or entertaining, please like and subscribe. And if you don't, Reggie's gonna make big potty in your yard. Bang, bang, bang,